Papa come. Welcome, wonderful family. It's that time again where we come together and uh, have a wonderful time sharing the Word of God and encouraging each other. I just want to welcome you all. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you also for sharing these uh, sharings. Uh, I've seen you sharing with friends, with family, with everybody else. And thank you for doing that. Let's team up and make sure that we make our world a better place. And we also kindle the spirit of hope and courage to the many of our people in, during this lockdown. Remember, the lockdown is one thing that uh, maybe this generation has never experienced. So it is something that we must be able to help each other, to carry each other so that we are able to make it through the lockdown and be, be found to be still standing on the other side. Remember the theme of our sharing is uh, peace in the midst of storms. And then that is very much important for us to know from Mark chapter number four, where Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. Every time there's a, there's a situation where, you know, we are compelled to be at a night or to be in a night experience, it's very much important for us to talk about hope. Hope says it's going to be fine. We're crossing over to the other side, despite what we might be going through. And tonight, I just want us to continue dealing with the area of the mind, because that is the most affected area during this lockdown. And that's the area which we need to really um, uh, share a lot and help each other to guard our minds in times like this. That is why tonight I'm going to talk about take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your thoughts. Remember, we spoke about be the gatekeeper of your thoughts. But now we're talking about taking charge of your thoughts. A scripture is in Proverbs chapter number 25 and verse 28. It reads, a person without self-control is like a city without walls. Wow. A person without self-control is like a city without walls. So taking charge of your thoughts is talking about self-control control dealing with your thoughts and making sure that they are under your control many people are victims of destructive and worthless thoughts and you know what they are so helpless some of them they even say what can i do these thoughts they just come past they just come I, 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 what do i do when an evil thoughts when a, when a wrong thought when a worthless thought comes what must i do and this is what we want to look at today and deal with because many people you know they desperately say I can't help it. These thoughts, they just come. I can't help it, Pastor. I didn't mean to, but they just come. But when we look at the ways of Martin Luther, the reformer, you know what he said? He said, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Very important. Very important statement. You cannot keep birds from flying over your head. That's very true. We who are in the farms here, you see birds flying over your head time and again. But you can keep them from building a nest in your head. That really you can. So thoughts are like birds. They fly over our heads. And not every thought should be allowed to settle on our heads. Choose which thoughts you want to settle on your head. Very much important because if you don't choose all th worthless thoughts, dirty thoughts, evil thoughts will come and settle. Remember, thoughts are no respecter of persons. They are like flies. You see flies, they don't care whose food it is. They don't care whose house is it. They just get in. They don't even care whose car is it. They just come in. Those are flies. They don't understand protocol. But... We do all we can to keep flies out of our houses. We do all we can to keep flies out of our cars. Do you know some people end up getting involved in accidents trying to take a fly out of the car? Why? Because it's so annoying, it's so disturbing to have a fly right inside the car. So the very same way we fight to take a fly out of the house, away from our dining rooms, out of our cars, that's what we should do in dealing with the wrong, worthless thoughts. When they knock at the doors of our minds, we must be able to deal with them. We must be able to kick them out. We must be able to doom them out of our, of our lives. Remember, 
We spoke about being uh, doorkeepers of our minds. This talks about sifting every thought that comes knocking, refusing some entry and giving some entry. Because the truth is that we are the products of uh, the thoughts that we are allowed to settle. That's one thing for sure. You are a product of those thoughts that you are allowed to settle. The birds that are building nests on your head or in your hair are the birds that manifest in your life. One great um, person that we know as a philosopher is Plato. Plato, he was an Athenian philosopher during the classical period of the ancient Greece and considered by many to be the most important philosopher who ever lived. Listen to what he said. I love it because he puts it so clear. He said, take charge of your thoughts. Flush out all dirty thoughts and quickly substitute them with good thoughts. I think that says it very well. I could not have put it so, so smart and so better and so clear than how Plato uh, puts it. You know, he says, take charge of your thoughts. Flush out all dirty thoughts quickly re, re, substitute them that is to say don't flush out dirty thoughts and leave a vacuum because when you leave a vacuum something is going to happen something is going to fill it immediately so fill it up substitute it with good thoughts very much important so the question will be how do i flush out dirty thoughts because this is the challenge of many people Many people, they have these dirty, worthless, useless thoughts flooding their, their minds. But they say, what must I do? Because it, it just comes. Pastor, it just comes. What must I do? We want to see how to flush those worthless, dirty, evil thoughts. Remembering that we said, an average person has about sixty to 80,000 thoughts flashing in their minds a day which is about 3.3 thoughts an hour and 80 percent it is said 80 percent of those thoughts are worthless useless dirty thoughts so there's a lot of flashing that must be done and that is why the majority of people do not succeed in life people do not succeed not because they are meant not to succeed but they they have got something that pulls them down or we've got something that pulls us down and we are not aware of it and we harbor it we carry it we cherish it and we feed it and that is why i concur with those who say success is a choice poverty is a choice yes of course when you look at africa and many parts of of, of africa that is not true but let allow me to say you know it's about the choices that we make. It's about the thoughts that we allow to settle and that we allow to uh, dominate our lives and our li and our minds. You have realized that th wrong thoughts, you don't have to, uh, to, 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 to fight for them to come. They are there in abundance. You know, dirty thoughts, wrong thoughts, they're just there. They are so abundantly available. And even the poorest of the poor can have dirty thoughts. Negative circumstances, you don't have to work to have them. They, they are there in abundance. It's like, I don't know why, but it's like you don't succeed by chance. You don't succeed by mistake. You don't conquer by mistake or by chance. You know, it must be de deliberate. It must be intentional. But failing, I'm telling you, you don't have to do anything. You just fail. Bad, corrupt, ungodly, dirty, and satanic thoughts. They are like weeds. You know, weeds, they don't need an encouragement to grow. It's so amazing how weeds are so, so alive and so strong. They grow even <laughs> on the cracks of a sidewalk or between the paved bricks. They grow. Those who have paved in your yards, you know what I'm talking about. You have see weeds growing. You see grass growing. But when you have to grow something of substance, or if you want to grow roses, you have to take care of it. 
roses specifically they 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 are too sensitive so wrong things grow easily wrong thoughts easily but good thoughts they don't just come easy you have to do something you have to be very intentional in making sure that you have got good thoughts so to deal with negative and useless dirty thoughts you must first understand the damage they've come to cause if you understand the damage you will have the tenacity to deal with them because they've come to drag you to their direction that's one thing for sure uh, then they have not come to say hi negative and dirty thoughts they've come to drag you to their direction they have not come just to greet you most people are in trouble today big big trouble deep trouble and you know what the reason is because they casually allowed wrong thoughts to dominate their minds and when you allow and casually so you know because a wrong thought comes it, it might be a, a corrupt activity you are an official in this organization or that and a wrong thought just drops in you but this and then you allow it casually and then the next thing it grows you know what people are in trouble and some they take their lives when they hear that they are going they're they they about to be investigated they take their lives but exactly did, did this thing happen when you were sleeping no you were not asleep a thought came there's nothing that happens abruptly and I find myself having done something uh, outrageous. No, it starts with a thought. And when I'm casual about thoughts, I'll end up a casualty. That is why it's very much important for us to understand that we always gravitate toward the direction of the most dominant thoughts in our lives. That is why you become what you think. So you go the direction of your most dominant thoughts. If your dominant thoughts are sinful, you gravitate toward that. The, you, you know, you follow your thoughts. You, 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 and you follow them steadily until you reach where the thoughts were taking you to. One other thing that is very true before you deal with these thoughts is to understand that thoughts are like seeds. They've got the potential to produce after their kind. Every thought, you must never take it light. It is like a seed. It has got the power to produce after its kind. And that should be motivation enough for you to know that this thing has got power to produce after its kind. So the longer I keep it, I am in, in essence, I am sowing it and it will surely produce. I remember uh, the, 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 uh, Shakespeare on one of the books, I think it's Julius Caesar, where Brutus said something about Caesar. He said Caesar is an, it's a serpent's egg which will grow, which will hatch and grow mis mischievous. And he said it must be destroyed in the shell. What a statement. Thoughts are like a serpent's egg. You know, they hatch and grow mischievous. You better destroy them while they're still in the shell. While in the shell, you can just, and that's it, they are finished. It's like, literally, a serpent's eggs, as eggs of a snake. If you pick them up and say, these eggs are so beautiful, and you keep them in the house, and one day you wake up, you find that they are open. So it means uh, snakes are out, little snakes are out, they are in your house. I'm telling you, you are in big moile gate, because every day they are growing. Because you were good, in, you were you were you 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 were um, so smart and so sweet that you thought it's an egg, it's harmless, it's it's not dangerous. But there is a serpent in that egg. There is a snake. If it's a mamba, there is a mamba in that egg. If, egg. if it's a cobra, there is a cobra in that egg. Give it some times, it will hatch, it will grow, and it will get you into serious trouble. If we we'll look at our thoughts like that that worthless thoughts dirty thoughts evil thoughts are exactly like a serpent's egg they will hatch they will grow mischievous they will taint your life so bad some of the people that we see arrested sometimes and because of horrible things that they've committed you look at them you look at their face and you say shams keep saying no it's it's not about the face you see you might look at pastor strike i know my facial uh, uh, features i know they they don't look that smart for many but you know what it's not how you look that makes you ugly it's how, what you think you might be a very handsome guy you might be a very pretty lady but you can be a devil because of your thoughts 
You can be a vampire because of your thoughts. So that's why you become evil. You become agile. No matter how you look physically because of your thoughts. I've seen some people who compete with me when it comes to facial looks. But you know, because of their beautiful hearts, because of their, 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 their you know, how sweet they are even when they talk. No, you don't see it. But you have got people, even those who abduct children, even those who uh, rape ladies, some of them, they are so handsome. And you are, you, you are fooled by the beauty of the face. But unfortunately, behind the face, there is a head. And in the head, there is a mind that is so corrupt, that is so dirty. Their thoughts are so evil. So, before you can flash, know the potential of a thought. Know what a thought carries. It's a serpent's egg. If it hatches, it will grow mischievous. It must be destroyed in the shell. To destroy it in the shell is easy. That is why you will not be arrested for the thoughts that you have destroyed before they manifested. I love what the Lord Jesus said, talking about thoughts. He said, if you look at a woman for to last after her, you have already committed adultery. That says to you, a thought is a very dangerous thing. It's a first stage. It will grow. And that is why you will never live a victorious life. You'll never live a, vict a victorious Christian life. You'll never live a victorious life as a person if you are not careful of what you think. If you are not careful of what goes on in your mind. If you are careless about what you see every day. Because what feeds our minds is what we see. You know, today with... Um, internet you choose what you want to see you choose you can see anything and everything but what is happening while you're watching it alone let me tell you what is happening eggs are beginning to, to you know you are laying eggs right in your mind you're laying eggs, eggs which eggs are going to grow give them time they are going to grow and they will hatch and you'll become the worst of creatures that we have ever seen that is why Many of our children today become violent at school and all those things. Where did they get this? It's because of what they watch on television. And remember one boy was watching a horror movie, movie. And the father said, son, why are you watching such a thing? And he laughed. He said, oh, dude, it's fiction. It's not true. <laughs> you, you, you know? But how many children know that that is fiction? Some, they absorb it and they swallow it as it is. You remember the days of Bruce Lee, most, maybe uh, our times. I was doing martial arts. And who were the motivation? Bruce Lee. Uh, did I know him? Have I ever meet, met him? No. And you know, we scream like him with men chakras and all those things. Why? Because what we see, paint pictures in our minds. And that is the thing that we might finally become. Now, let's talk about flushing it out. First, remember that never leave an idle mind it is a fact that an idle mind is a devil's workshop an idle mind will always attract dirty stuff so to flush out wrong thoughts make sure you don't leave you you don't accommodate an idle mind so to keep your mind busy learn to think and engage your mind into things that you dream about, into things that you desire, into things that benefits your life, your family, your career, and uh, even the world. So occupy your mind. That is why an idle mind is true. It becomes a devil's workshop. So if you, know, if you don't know how to deal with that, that's how first to avoid uh, 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 negative and dirty thoughts. Keep your mind busy. Engage it. It, it's, it's work. It must be engaged. Whenever a negative thought lands into your mind, don't give it a chance. Flash, flash it immediately. But how do I flash it? Number one, first, uh, reason with it. Reason it out. Show it how useless it is. And tell it it has got a wrong address. Reason with that thought. Ask that thought, what have you come to do which will better me which will better which will make what will make me a better person out of what you're saying you know deal with it and as if you're dealing with a person and ask it how will that help me uh, improve or contribute positively to humanity 
You are dealing with a thought and that's how our Lord Jesus Christ, maybe I should say this. Because many people think when the devil tempted our Lord Jesus Christ, he came in person and then he stood there and said, I am Satan, I'm here to tempt you. No. You know how he did it? Through thoughts. Thoughts hit Jesus' mind. Boom. Just like that. And Jesus was not casual about thoughts. He knew this is not just a thought. He knew behind this thought there is somebody who is controlling it like a, a whether they call it joystick, you know, playing with it. And then when you surrender to that thought, he manipulates it, you through the thoughts. Now Jesus said, it is written. Dealing with thoughts, it is written and it is written. And it is written. He, he, de he dealt with those thoughts through the word of God. But you know what? Sometimes we are so casual. We allow this thought. We don't, de we don't uh, 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 reason the thought out. We don't tell the thought that we are not its host. We don't tell it the word of God. So, you know what? When you ask those thoughts questions, they will not respond because they know they've just come only to, for, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And if they don't have a point, then you can easily dismiss them. In fact, they will, they will leave you before you even know what is happening. The key is to never allow your mind to idle. Occupy your mind with purposeful engagements. Challenge your mind every time. Challenge your mind. Ask your mind questions that keeps it researching. Because that is what we should be using our minds. We should be using our thoughts for. Challenge it. Don't, when you look at it last, ask yourself, but how did this come about? Let your mind engage. Don't be a simple person who looks at things and just, no. Ask yourself questions. When you use an iPad, what exactly? How did Steve, Steve Jobs uh, go about this? You know, ask questions. When you do that, you're engaging your mind and it does not have time to idle. You are thinking. And today with the internet, while you're thinking like that, Google, check things. That is why it's easy to become smart. To become smart is to become smart here. Is to use your thoughts and engage your thoughts constructively. Every time. That is why you may be very young, maybe less than 10 years, that's why we've got children that are less than, than 10 years. You listen to them talk, they are smart. You've got teenagers, they are smart. Why? Because it's what you engage your thoughts. Or is the kind of thoughts that you engage. In other words, prescribe to your mind what to engage on. Prescribe something. Give it some topic so that it does a research. And when you do that, I'm telling you, you will use this machine called your mind in a more effective way. Listen to what uh, uh, Paul uh, is prescribing here for the mind and for thoughts in the book of Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 8. Listen to this. He says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So he says, my mind, truth, truthful things. Number two, whatsoever things are honest. Hey, honest things. Whatsoever things are just. Oh, just things. Hey, Whatsoever things are pure. Oh, pure, pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Yes, lovely things. Whatsoever things are of good report. Yes, good report. Not bad. Good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Can you see that? Think on these things. It's a prescription. These are the things to think about. Things that are true. Things that are honest. Things that are just. Things that are pure. Things that are lovely. Things that are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Friends, that's how to flush all the dirty thoughts. Prescribe the thinking. Prescribe what your mind must engage on. I want to close by saying, create a processing room for your thought life. Make sure that you have got a processing room. Tell yourself, I'm creating for myself a processing room. In the processing room, you know what you do? You take your thoughts or you select thoughts. They are those that you flush out because they are useless. Even in farming, when they harvest, there are those things. That's why there's first grade, second grade, and things like that, and those that are just, you know, 
even when you do fishing with a net, you don't just take everything to the market. There is selection. So even with thoughts, as they come like that, this in your processing room, you must select that these thoughts I allow in, this I don't allow in. And those that you have allowed in, then incubate them, you know, cover them and keep them so that they are able to grow, to mature. You know, they get into a process of just being, from just being a thought, now they become imaginations. Because you have you, you have processed it, you have kept it long enough. Now they become imagination. Why they become when we talk of imaginations, we talk they become Im images. You know, they came from being just thoughts. Now you have processed it in your processing room. Now they are images. Now, because they are images, now they are imaginations. You imagine, you see those thoughts. Now you see them in a picture form. You see them in a 3D form. You know, and when you see them like that, you know what the Bible says about that. The Bible, not the Bible, God. You know what God says about that? God says, this is just the beginning of what they've imagined. Nothing will restrain them. Did you know that the Tower of Babel project was not stopped halfway? God stopped it before it started. How did he stop it before it started? Because he saw these guys in their minds and he said, let's go down to see what the sons of men are building. Because you build in your mind. And God was able to see in the mind. He saw the pictures in the mind. He saw this thing that these guys are building. And he said, let me go stop it. And you know how he stopped it? He squashed it as an egg. And how did he squash it? He said, I will deal with the communication system cut the communication system. Now they could no longer understand each other. Now, because they cannot understand each other, they cannot move it to the process of manufacturing or to the process of actualizing it. My friend, I hope you're getting something. The processing room, the processing center that you create is like when you have eggs, you're brooding over the eggs. The eggs will hatch. As if you brood over them, they will hatch. Guess what comes out of those eggs? Eggs, exactly what the nature of the eggs. So good thoughts, they're like eggs. Brood over them, protect them. You know, we always say, um, uh, like people, some people, they say, I don't want to eat a chicken head. I don't want to be stupid, as stupid as a chicken. No, a chicken are not stupid. Maybe those ones which are chemically uh, 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 formulated. But when you talk of chicken, I've got chicken here, indigenous chicken. You know, when they sit over their eggs or they are laying eggs, when they come out from the nest, you know what they do? They make a shout quack, 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 as if they struggle there. What are they trying to say? They are trying to say, uh, in fact, they are trying to tell every other intruder that don't go this way, there is trouble. But the truth is that they are saying, Please don't come this way. I've got some valuables that I've put here. Learn to protect your valuables. Learn to protect your good thoughts. Learn to protect those thoughts that are pure, that are holy, that are clean, that are lovely. That, you know, when you keep those thoughts from every other thing, I can tell you, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care your background. I don't even care your level of education. But I can tell you, you will rise up to what God has intended for you to be. Because with that, you will even understand that when you study, you study in the line of the thoughts that have filled your heart, your imagination. Now you feed it and you will manifest it. My friend, during this lockdown, it's a time for you to create a processing center. By the time the lockdown is over, then you will, be, you will start producing those things that you have been incubating. I'm saying to you, family, let us continue observing the rules of the, of, of the lockdown. Let's stay at home. Let's wash our hands with soap. Let's sanitize. Let's use masks. Let us also make sure that we, 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 we observe social distance. And share this with friends, family, and all those whom you love. Keep yourself safe. Keep your family safe. Keep South Africa safe. Keep Africa safe. I want to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, thank you for your word that sets us free, that liberates us. Thank you for your word, Lord God Almighty. And I thank you for touching our lives today, showing us the power that you have given us in our thoughts. As you say to us, we should take charge of our thoughts. I thank you, Spirit of the living God, for opening our eyes, for opening our hearts to see, to understand. In Jesus' name. Right now, Father, I pray for our government. I pray for our ministers. I pray for our president. I pray, Lord, for our premiers. I pray for our MECs. I pray for our doctors. I pray for our nurses. I pray for all on institutional services. Divine protection, Father. 
divine wisdom, my Lord and God. Help them, Father, to as they continue being front uh, liners in this battle. And keep them, keep their families. By the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we arrest the spread of this virus in our communities through prayer, through faith in you, Lord, and through observing the most important advices that we are giving. In Jesus' name I pray, and I thank you, God, because I know you hear my prayer to answer it. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I even uh, say bye-bye, I can I, I can feel somebody say, Pastor, I'm not born again, but I think this word makes sense to me. I want to pray with you, friend. Make, make it right with God. Open your heart to God. Pray with me and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you today. I open my heart and I surrender to you. Save my soul. Make me today your child. I thank you, Father, and I bless you. I believe my sins are forgiven me and I am a child of God in Jesus name amen friend if you did that I want you to know it is well with you and I just want to say thank you once more wonderful viewers I please beg you to share this video with friends with family with everybody else and as we do so I want you to know that we're contributing in building our nation and in helping somebody and lifting somebody against spirits of depression. And I thank you for doing that. Thank you for watching even pastors, men of God and women of God. Thank you, Pastor Tinigo. Thank you so very much. Dr. Mbetsa, thank you so, so very much. You guys, I really appreciate your support, men and women of God. And now, tomorrow, it's a Sunday. We have our Sunday service. And MTW family, our senior pastor, Pastor Jolin, will be ministering to us. So please, you don't miss that one. Be ready and have a great time. Thank you so very much and God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you so very much.